Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. And today, as we get started on the new project car, we're gonna talk about the most important tool uh, that every tuner needs to have, the wide band. So stick around. Hey everybody, it's Kyle. Thanks again for stopping by the garage. And I wanna start off as usual for thanking all the new subscribers out there Everybody that throws the thumbs up, that's the best payment that you can give me, sharing this information with others. You guys are awesome, the whole community. You guys are the best. So, we have the new project car, and there's a couple hiccups. If you've been following me on the Instagram, I'll post a link down below here. You'll know that uh, this particular car, this 2006 Cadillac XLR, happens to be one of the oddball early models that does not have an ECM that can be programmed on it. So one of the first modifications that we're having to do is an ECM swap on it. There'll be more about that later on, but we're going to swap it over to an E67. It's pretty straightforward, and I'm going to document the whole process so you can follow along, see what's done as part of an ECM swap from finding out all the different pins and wires that are on the current ECM, moving them over to the new connectors, and then even programming the new uh, used uh, ECM, which I'm not even sure what it's out of. I ordered one, is like 45 bucks. We should be able to use a service tool. Uh, hopefully the D, uh, VX Diag that I have, which I've used to flash a Gen 5 in the past, can be used to flash this one. We'll have to jump through a couple hoops, but we'll get to that eventually. First off though, I wanna to talk to you guys about wide bands. You've heard me talk about it, harp on it in the past, that it is the most important tool in the entire tuning uh, catalog you know, short of the tuning software itself, you have got to have a wide band if you are going to properly tune the vehicle. And so, before we do any other modifications to this, we are going to pick out a wide band. And I'm going to talk you through some of my thought processes on how I select a wide band. And then I'm going to show you a couple of the ones that I'm thinking about using. I think I've already narrowed it down, but I want to give you some examples. Now, a couple things. Uh, first, we're only looking at sensors that support, was it 4.9 uh, Bosch sensors? Uh, the 4.2 is the old style sensor. We're going to steer clear of those. Uh, they don't have the repeatability or reliability of the 4.9s. The 4.9s can be used uh, almost, you know, you can install them and just leave them in there. The old 4.2s, you couldn't do that. You had to do a lot of calibrations on them. So any system that is based on the old style sensor, we're not even going to consider those. Now, that being said, we have to look at the different ways to communicate the sensor into the scanner software for data logging. And there's the big three. The first one that you'll see on almost every single sensor is analog. And that is basically taking the analog signal and, and to understand how it starts, your actual wideband sensor itself is an analog. It goes to the controller for the wideband and that converts it over to digital. Then if you have a gauge, it shows up on the gauge as AFR or Lambda and then it converts it back to analog. You are not taking the direct analog signal and carrying it all the way to the laptop or to the tuner where you have to plug it in based on if you have, say, the Pro feature set with the MPVI2 or even the first generation. Then you have to go into the software and actually set up a uh, uh, the scale for the analog. So you have a zero at this much voltage, which is you know zero voltage or one voltage based on how it's scaled out down to five volts usually on these analogs one to five is is kind of the common and that will coincide to different readings of AFR or lambda so you have to set that scaling up now the second style which is what I ran on the super auto is a serial and don't be confused because a lot of them will say that they have serial support a lot of the AEMs say that they have serial but they're talking about AEM uh, can net or something like that a lot of these uh, wideband manufacturers have their own serial bus that you can daisy chain multiple uh, gauges together. Uh, does not mean that you can necessarily uh, use the serial output into a computer. You're looking for something like an RS-232 serial, in which that case we have the analog from the wideband that goes, converts over to digital in the controller, goes to your gauge, and then stays digital all the way to the laptop. So there's only one conversion on those. Uh, then finally, uh, and there might be others, but AEM is the only one that I know of that has an OBD2 adapter. And it actually puts out a new parameter. You have to scan for additional parameters through the scanner and it will find it. And it shows up on the CAN bus net. Now, you have to be careful because CAN bus is not supported on all vehicles. Generally, after 2008, those are all going to be CAN bus. But prior to 2008, you have to double check to see if it's a CAN bus vehicle. This one being a 2006 actually is, and I'll show you how you can find that out. 
On top of that, we're only considering gauges that will uh, allow you to do lambda. Almost all of them will allow you to do AFR. In fact, if you go over to Autometer's website, they have a whole slew of wideband gauges. All of them are AFR. I don't know that you can change any of those over to Lambda. So we don't necessarily want to deal with anything that is strictly in AFR because we want to be able to tune things like E85 without having to do weird scaling. Being able to tune in Lambda makes everybody's life a whole lot easier. So that being said, let's dive in. Let's look at a couple of these and I'll give you kind of my thought process on it, my critique. And remember, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. This is all my opinion. I expect if you have different opinions or if you've uh, dealt with different wideband gauges and have your own experience, post down below in the comments. Let me know what your experience is with other manufacturers. I've used Innovate in the past. I've really been using a lot of AEM electronics lately. Uh, I really like AEM stuff and I'll probably go with AEM on this car. Uh, but I have been looking at some of the other ones in particular for the idea of being able to output a narrow band signal from the wide band. We'll talk about that here in a second. Okay, first up we have the AEM uh, 30300. This is the one that I use on the Super Auto. Great gauge, uses the newer style sensor, uh, doesn't require the calibration, has all of the options as far as analog out and serial out, uh, and does both AFR and Lambda. It's just a very reliable gauge. I've had absolutely no issues with it. The integration with the serial into uh, the scanner works great as far as HP tuners goes. You can go out, buy a like $12 USB serial adapter and hook this thing up. Save yourself the cost of having to do uh, the pro feature set or having to you know, wire it in through uh, the EGR wire on your ECM, things like that. Really for the money, it is the easiest solution and you don't have to mess with the additional analog scaling. And so it is always my go-to whenever I suggest a gauge for people that I don't know whether or not they can use the CAN bus one. Let's take a look at that one real quick. So here we have the 30-0334, which is called the OBD2. As you can see, it has an OBD2 connector on it. Uh, literally, it plugs in, has a pass-through. You plug your scanner into the back of it. You can use more than one, so you can actually daisy chain uh, multiple of these units up. And then as you go in through the uh, buttons on the display and change the OBD2 address for each one so you can find additional ones. So this is also a great option for somebody who is wanting to run more than one O2 sensor. Uh, I have not decided whether or not I want to run more than one. There's some considerations specific to this platform being that it is a Cadillac XLR. One of the big ones is there are no gauge pods for this thing. So I've got to figure out where to mount gauges if I end up mounting gauges. But this one also will do analog. So if you want to do that side of it too, you can. But honestly, that is the draw to this gauge is the fact that it just comes right in through the OBD2 port. I mean, it is the simplest thing to hook up, wire up, all that stuff. Uh, you know, very straightforward, quickest installation, and might even be a good uh, option for guys that are doing tuning on the side and want the ability to swap around and do stuff. Uh, that being said, I'm not really talking about any handheld ones. That's a completely different tool for guys who are really into tuning other people's vehicles that need that option. So this is all going to be in-car installations. Let's look at the AEM inline unit real quick. Okay, this is the AEM 30310. This is an inline unit, no gauge involved. Uh, pretty straightforward. You're just going to get the outputs on the analog or the serial that you can bring back into your scanner and use it that way. This might be a better option for what I'm thinking about doing because I would like to do a digital dash setup somewhere and then run HP tuners and then just have the gauge set up as the default load that pops up and I can do an AFR gauge on there using this device. Pretty streamlined, pretty cool little device without having to go in and get a gauge. So that was probably at the top of the list. But we've got a couple competitors that I want to look at and take into consideration also. Okay, the first one is the PLX SMAFR. This one has a pretty interesting brain box that comes along with it, and it's one of them that can actually output a 1 to 5 to simulate your narrow band. So not only can you just replace your front O2 sensor with this, you can 
build a harness to simulate and plug it in and still run your narrow band, still do uh, long-term field turns, stuff like that without having to add a bung. This is great for the guys that don't necessarily have access to the welders, don't want to have to take their car in to have a bung added on or pull their headers off and take it in. And so I don't have that much experience with PLX, but I know there's some people out there on the channel that have been running them that have had luck with them. So I thought that I would put that into the running. Now let's look at a couple of the Innovate units. Now the first one that we're looking at is the Innovate DLG-1 and the reason I added this one on there is because it's got two wide bands built into one display. It's kind of a cool idea if you are deciding that you want to go out and have a wide band on both banks, which isn't always a bad idea. You can bring those two values in, average them together to get a better idea how the entire engine is doing. But generally, having a wide band in one bank is more than enough. So I kind of threw this one up there just because I thought it was an interesting design, an interesting way of going about it. Uh, but let's look at the other one that I was considering. And this one is the LC2, which is, you know, more people are familiar with the LC1 back in the day. This is the updated version. This is an inline controller, much like the AEM one that we're looking at. Uh, the cool thing about it is, once again, this one has multiple analog outs for one sensor, so you can have a wideband analog out that goes to your data logger and a narrow band, and they're completely customizable through the software that Innovate has out there for free. So you can actually go in and set the ranges of the analog based on how you want to see it, instead of the opposite way of where generally you have to set up the analog range in the scanner based on what it says in the uh, the data sheet for this, the sensor or the controller itself. So all in all, let's go back and look at the OBD2 one real quick because I told you that we would take a glance at how you can find out whether or not your vehicle would support OBD2 through the AEM unit. So as you can see here, it literally says that this is for 08s and ups. Well, there is a specific reason, and that is because it is based on the CAN bus communication standard, which basically was required in 2008 on most platforms. Correct me if I'm wrong. I might be, if I remember right though, I wanna say that that was the next evolution of OBD2 standard that got rolled out. Uh, if you know different, post it down below, and I will uh, you know, do a correction on that. But that being said, there is a quick way in the scanner. If you hook up to your vehicle, and open up the scanner, there is a specific tab down at the bottom called details, and here's what you'll see. Okay, now that we have the details opened up on the scanner, you'll notice very at the very beginning there, there is an option that says protocol CAN 500 kilobits per second. That means that it is using the CAN OBD2 standard, and you can see down below it that the TCM and the ECM are also using it. That should be a good indication that this will work with your platform, even if it is a pre-2008. AEM just kind of throws a blanket statement out there and says, hey, 2008 beyond, that's it. Uh, let's dive in real quick into the scanner while we're here and take a look at the different channels that are specific to different brands. So if we go down here to the bottom, you'll see that there is a lot of external inputs based on if you have the MPVI Pro, which has four analogs, the MPVI 2, which has the two, and then there's the serial inputs, which goes through the different brands, which they support AEM, uh, Innovate, PLX, and Daytona for serial inputs. But that doesn't mean that all of those gauges will work. You need to make sure that is the correct serial output from the gauge to work on the serial input. That's why I'm saying you're looking for something like the RS-232 serial output, not one that is a proprietary serial output. But a lot of these is just the brand, such as AEM, because any of the ones that AEM has out there that has the 232 will work with that serial input. So that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. Go down into the comments, let me know what you think. Which one do you think I should run? If you have experience with some other ones, let me know about those. I'm leaning towards not having to use the Pro Feature Set. I've talked about that a lot because the MPVI 2 Pro Feature Set right now is a ripoff. I will go to my grave saying that it is a ripoff until HP tuners fix things like uh, offline data logging and all the other stuff that they've promised in the Pro Feature Set. Right now, it's basically just the analog inputs, and they're charging $150 for it. Honestly, if they wanted to get some goodwill for people out there, they would just enable the analog input uh, portion of it, let you buy the adapter, which is like 30 bucks, and not have to pay for the Pro Feature Set until the rest of the features come out but they're not gonna do that. They're a company, they're there to make money. I just wish that they would actually fulfill the promises. All that being said, let's focus back on wide bands. 
I uh, am going to do a video follow up here soon, installing the wideband, going through the bung installation, all that stuff, unless, eh, who knows, maybe I'll do one of the ones that has a uh, analog output to replace the narrow bands and swap that in so I don't have to do a bung. But nonetheless, let me know what your thoughts are. If you have a suggestion on which one I should get or which one you want to see in the Project Country Club, hit up the description below. If you found any of this information useful, uh, throw up the thumbs up. If you didn't, throw the thumbs down, but let me know why. If you have any questions about wide bands, specifically the ones that I've talked about or maybe ones that I didn't talk about, hit up those comments again. And if for some reason you still haven't subscribed, what do you have to lose? Don't you want to learn how to tune? This is all free information. So that being said, once again, I want to thank all the subscribers, all the patrons, all the people that throw the thumbs up, all the people that show up on the live show on Thursday nights. It's awesome. If you haven't checked it out, 8 Eastern, you guys are the greatest. And thank you for stopping by the garage. But remember, ABT, always be tuning.